Hello and welcome to another video in my How to Draft M21 series. In these videos I go over each of the deck archetypes in the M21 draft format with a focus on best of one. So we're not going to be worrying about sideboard cards. Most sideboard cards are going to go into the unplayable pile. This is very much focused on the ranked grind and I hope you enjoy the video. If uh, you do enjoy it, please don't forget to like and subscribe and comment below if you agree with some of the picks. So let's head over to the pick order. Here we can see the pick order layout that I have. Uh, on the left are the first pickable cards and on the right are the unplayable cards basically for this deck. The color that you want to be primarily focusing on if you're going to draft this deck is red. Blue is very much a support color in this format. It's a good support color but really as you can see from the far left here the best cards are the red ones and in particular the removal. Red has very good depth of spells and removal in this format and you're going to need some of them for this deck to be viable. So let's start with the column on the left. So first we have Shock. Shock is an excellent removal spell in this format. There are a lot of things with two toughness that you want to be killing. It's very very good. It only costs one mana. It has synergies with all of our prowess creatures and you're going to want to be drafting it very highly. First pickable card, easily. Heartfire Emulator is one of the best two-drops in the format. Not only is it an aggressive two-drop that synergizes with our spells because it has prowess, it also doubles a as a removal spell itself. Scorching Dragonfire is another excellent removal spell. Uh, two mana for three damage is great in this format. I think it hits more than 70% of all creatures in the format. And it has the bonus that it exiles as well, so if you want to kill something like a Pitchburn Devils or an Arsonist or a Deathbloom Thalid or any of the other creatures that have on death effects, then this is an excellent removal spell. Then we have Soul Seer, which is an excellent rate, three mana for five damage, and the Indestructible Clause is relevant. It can kill things like Brash Taunter and Season Hallowblade, which if they're not dealt with, can run away with games on their own. Soul Seer is another first pickable card. Every card in this first column is first pickable and goes in any red deck. Next column we have Opt. Opt is an excellent card all round. It has great synergy in our deck and it just is a very good card, very highly pickable. You want a couple of these in your deck if you can get them. Jeskai Elder is a great two drop in particular in this deck. It's, its home is definitely the blue red spells deck. Uh, you're less likely to be picking it as highly in the other decks, however it's still a good card. But in the blue red spells deck where you're going to be removing creatures out of the way and casting a lot of spells to pump it up, it's very very good. It draws you cards. Next we have Chandra's Magmut. Chandra's Magmut is another great two drop. Uh, once it stops being able to attack, it can still ping the opponent. That's not hugely relevant, but it definitely puts them in with, within range when you need it to. Uh, I've used it a lot in this format, and I think it's a great, great two drop. Very, very high pickable, A tier, a -tier common. Mistral Singer is one of the cornerstones of the deck. It's not quite as powerful as the removal spells, which is why it is in this column, but it is very, very close. Like, I would consider it to be a first pickable card. It's a 3 mana 2-2 two -two flying with prowess, very aggressive, evasive, and synergizes excellently with all of our non-creature spells. Rousing Reed, excellent rate for this card. Plus 1, plus 1 and flying to get things over the top of the enemy blockers, and it draws 2 and discards a card when it comes into play, which means it essentially replaces itself. Any of the enchantment cards in this format that replace themselves when you cast them, or even indeed any of the spells that can trip, are just very powerful. Spellgorge of Weird is a must-kill 3-drop in this deck. If it is allowed to grow, it can become very, very difficult for the opponent to deal with, synergizes with our deck very well, and can grow very, very quickly. Goblin Wizardry is an underrated card, I think, uh, but it's very, very good. It's instant speed, which is worth remembering, so you can get your opponent by blocking with it uh, sometimes. And the synergies with it and some of the other spells, you know, a lot of the one mana cantrips and something like Burn Bright, which we have down here, can really lead to closing out the game very quickly. You cast a couple of cantrips and a Burn Bright, and suddenly these wizards are very, or well, these goblin wizards are very, very hard to block uh, and or will just kill the opponent. Experimental Overload is the signpost uncommon for this color pair. Uh, it's a good card, it's, it's a little slow. You, you really do need a critical mass of instants and sorceries for it to be good. It's often going to be a returning removal spell, which is very good. However, casting it in turn 4 is not going to net you a particularly big creature. It's very much a late game card. You're not massively happy to see this in your opening hand, thinking, oh, I'm going to cast this on turn 4 and it's going to make me a large creature, because it's just not. However, it's still a very good card. 
in the next column. Uh, this is very close. I almost put crash through in the column before um, because of how good it is. But I decided that it, it belonged more here because it's very specifically a, a blue red card, I think. Uh, it can be played in the other decks because it does have synergy with those as well. Uh, you're not going to be unhappy about having this in your deck because it cantrips. But I think it's well worth drafting very highly. Unsubstantiate is a very good card in this deck in particular. In an aggro control deck, you're going to be removing blockers out of the way, triggering your prowess. And it can also be used in a pinch to remand, essentially, a removal spell. Frost Breath. When I first started this format, I didn't think this was a very good card. I saw people playing a bunch of them in their decks, and I thought it was incorrect. But having played against it and with it a bit more, especially in a blue-red deck, I think it's very, very powerful. Three mana, remove two blockers for two turns is very, very good. It's not very good if you're behind. You don't want to be using this as a as a weird fog. But as an aggressive card, Frost Breath is great. Bolt Hound is a great three drop. Uh, it's much better in the white red deck because it has more synergy with the attackers in that deck. However, it's still a very good card. It's a three mana two two haste that gives you other creatures plus one plus zero. Reign of Revelation is a very good card, I think. It's four mana, which is a little slow and a little bit clunky. However, it draws three cards, which is quite a lot and has synergies with our prowess creatures, so I put this quite highly. Kinetic Augur, obviously this card belongs in this deck. It's doesn't really belong in any other deck. You're not going to have enough instants and sorceries to make it good. However, in this deck, when your graveyard's going to be full of them, it's going to be a big trampler and can also draw you some more cards. Get rid of some lands, draw some extra cards. Roman Ghostlight is one of the best blue commons, but at five mana in an aggro control deck, I don't think it belongs as highly as it does in the other decks. But I think you're still not unhappy to be playing one in, in your deck uh, in a late game play to remove more blockers. Uh, or keep up the tempo. It's very, very, very good if you're ahead. Uh, it's okay if you're behind, but often it's not going to be able to block very well. Uh, but yeah, great card if you're ahead, great tempo. Shipwreck Dowser uh, is again, it's a 5 drop, so it's a little slow. 3-3 three, three isn't a great body for 5 mana. However, returning removal spell when you're not too far behind, uh, or on parity or ahead, it's going to be very, very good. Really what you'd be looking to do with your 5 drops in blue-red is just close out the game, and I think this helps do that. Okay, moving on to the next column. We have Frantic Inventory, which is a good card as long as you have two or more of them. It has good synergies with our deck, it cantrips, and it triggers our prowess. But I think people are taking these quite highly at the moment, so it's going to be difficult to get them in multiples. If you can, though, it's well worth playing them, especially when you start casting the second and third ones. You're going to be drawing a lot of cards and triggering a lot of prowess. King Glidemaster is a fine 2-drop. It has better synergies with the other decks where you have bigger creatures that you want to jump into the air, which is why it's a bit lower down. We have much better 2-drops that we want to be casting uh, in the form of Immolator, Elder, and Magma. And also a lot of our removal costs 1 or 2 mana, which is why it's not rated in this deck as highly as it would be in other decks, uh, because uh, most decks want more 2-drops. But I still think it's a very good card. Vidalian Arcanist is interesting. If you have some more of the expensive spells you want to be casting, it gets a lot better. Otherwise, it probably drops down a little bit. So I've put it in the middle here because it can be very useful. You know, if you have Reign of Revelations, turn to slags because you're lacking some of the other removal spells, then Vidalian Arcanist gets a lot better. Chandra's Piling looks better than it is. It, the fact that it only gets plus one, plus zero and gains double strike instead of plus two, plus zero, which I think would make it a very, very good card, is, is a big deal. You can trigger it relatively easily with Magmets, but unlikely you're going to be triggering it more than once, and then it's a 2-3 double striker, which is a you know a fine rate for a two-mana card, but I don't think it's that great, to be honest. I've played with it and against it, and it's not impressed me that much. It's going to be trading a lot of the time for a re relatively high amount of investment. Hubble Fiend is an average two-drop. Uh, it's fine in this deck. If, you're, if you need two-drops, you're happy to play it, but I'd much rather play any of the other two-drops over Hobble Fiend. Igneous Kerr, slightly better than Hobble Fiend. Requires a bit of mana investment, but a good card nonetheless. Has some good synergies late game with the crash-throughs. So you're more than happy to be playing Igneous Kerr as a two-drop. Library Larcenist is an okay card. Three mana, one, two is not impressive. It does replace itself when it attacks. And you stick a rousing read on it and it gets very, very good. Um, it's medium though, so let's leave it in this middle pile. Burn Bright, again in the middle, because most of the time this card isn't very good, but if you happen to have a bunch of Goblin Wizard tokens out, then it's going to be very, very good. Uh, you can put this in a package with Crash Throughs, Burn Bright, and Wizardry, and you're going to have a good time 
running over your opponent. Capture Sphere. In a pinch, this is fine removal. It's flash, taps a creature, it doesn't untap. Uh, okay card, four mana, which is why it's in this pile. But it's still a fine removal spell if you're lacking interaction. Battle Rattle Shaman is an okay card. It costs four mana for a 2-2, but it can attack as a 4-2. It can target itself with its ability. It has a better place than some of the other decks, which is why it's in this middle column, but I still think it's a fine uncommon card and a fine four drop that you can include in your deck, especially if you have a bunch of flyers. Enthralling Hold is an interesting one. So because it can only enchant a tapped creature, you're going to want some synergies with this in order to make it a lot better so that you're not getting hit in the face before you take that creature. In a race situation, you don't want to be taking a hit with that big creature, then stealing it. But if you have Frost Breaths or Talarian Kraken in your deck, you can tap it down and then steal it, then it gets a lot better. But it's still control magic, really, and that's just a very good card. I think it belongs in some of the other decks a bit better that can afford to be playing some of the slower strategies with Kraken or can afford to be more defensive and throw a chump blocker in the way uh, before they steal a creature, but it's still a fine card. Havoc Jester is here because it's a 5 mana 5-5. Five five. It's very difficult to trigger its ability, but 5 mana 5-5 five five in this format is huge. It's one of the biggest creatures in the format. The only things that are bigger cost more than 5 mana. So yeah, you'd probably be happy playing a Havoc Jester in your deck as top end. Turn to Slag, I know this is 5 mana removal and normally that's not very good, but in a deck with a lot of spell synergies I think it gets a bit better. If you have some Vidalian Arcanist you can cast it earlier or cheaper, allowing you to cast more spells in the same turn. I think it's a fine card and you know sometimes you get to get a Short Sword as well, which isn't great, or a Malefic Scythe. But still, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a fine removal spell if you're lacking interaction. You're going to want any of the other removal spells over it, but you know if you don't have enough of them then go ahead and play it. Talarian Kraken is a fine 6-drop. It can take over the game on its own. If you have some card draw spells, combine it with Opt or Reign of Revelation, tap down the board, win the game. It blocks very well. It's a bit slow because it's 6 mana, which is why it's not rated higher in this particular deck. But otherwise, yeah, it's a very good card. Waker of Waves. More often than not, if you play this card in your deck, you're going to be using the 2-mana ability. However, if you draw it late game and you have 7 mana, it's a very good card. 7 mana, 7-7. Seven, seven. But otherwise, you know, it's flexible, which is why it's in this slot. You're not going to be taking it that highly, even though it's a good card. But, you know, say you happen to take it very early, thinking you might be leaning into another deck, and then you see that blue-red is open. You're not going to be massively unhappy playing it. Volcanic Geyser is an interesting card. So it looks very good, and it can be very good, but it's quite difficult to get a good rate out of it as a removal spell. It's, it's a very good finisher, and there's been a, many games where I've been hoping that I top deck it to, to do those last four, few points of damage to the opponent after they've stabilized. Uh, but there's also times when I've had it in my hand, and it's always just one mana short of killing the creature that I want it to kill. So it's a very medium card, but I think it's got some good synergies, and I think it does belong in the deck, at least one copy. Moving on to the next column, we've got essentially a lot of filler spells and then some filler creatures. So we have Rookie Mistake. If you're low on instants and sorceries, you know, this can get the opponent. Allows them to, uh, allows you to trade without losing your creature for the cost of a spell. Pumps your board if you have a lot of prowess creatures. You know, the more prowess creatures you have, the better this card gets, basically. Lofty Denial is another interesting one. If you're lacking interaction, perhaps you want to put a Lofty Denial or two in your deck. If you have a bunch of Singers or other ways to give your creatures flying, like Rousing Reeds, and it gets a lot better because it basically becomes a counterspell in a deck that's aggro control that really wants to be attacking and killing your opponent early, it's very often that even that one mana is going to be relevant. Uh, you don't want to prioritize this too highly, but it, it's certainly not out of place in the deck. Sure Strike, I think, is better in other decks. However... It's very good in this deck as well. Sometimes, if you don't have other ways to trick your opponent with combat tricks or with removal spells, then a sure strike in the deck isn't going to be too out of place. It gives first strike. It doesn't cantrip, which is you know a down downside of it, but otherwise, it's an it's an okay card. It's good filler. Thriller possibility, I think, is more filler cards. If you don't have other card draw spells, then you're, you're going to be happy playing one. If you've got a bunch of ops, then you're probably not going to put it in your deck. But, you know, discarding a land to draw two cards is, you know, never a bad rate. Teferi's Protégé doesn't really belong in this deck. A 3-mana 2-3 two, that loots for 2-mana is just a little bit too slow. If you're really stuck for creatures, you can put one in your deck or two. But it's going to make your deck a lot worse if you're playing blue-red spells. 
Teferi's Tutelage is a card that can be an alternative win condition if you have a bunch of card draw spells. You know, there's a lot of decks that just fold to this if you play it on turn three. They can't do anything about it. You know, if they're not playing an aggressive deck, then you can just sit there killing their creatures, drawing cards, and milling them until they're dead. Uh, it's a very good card. I think I would take it highly early on in a draft, but if I already know that I'm in blue-red, I wouldn't take it as highly at all. Sanctum of Calm Waters, similarly, it's a good blue card. The important part about this is it's a may draw X and discard a card. So you, you're not going to deck yourself or have to discard something you don't want to, but it does cost four mana. Um, however, if you have tutelage in the deck, for instance, then it gets a lot better. Um, this is where you're sort of leaning more towards the control side of the deck rather than the aggro side of the deck. So, you know, if you have more of the controlling cards and less of the explosive start cards, then these two cards together get a lot better. Pitchburn Devils is a fine aggressive and defensive three drop. I've moved it down here because I think I would rather have Havoc Jester over it and turn to Slag if I have five drops in the deck in this particular deck. However, it is still a very good card. It's late game. It's very difficult for them to block if you've got them on the ropes uh, or impossible to block. You know, you have this out and you attack and if they don't have a way to block it without killing it, then you might just win the game. That's definitely happened on both sides for me and my opponents. Read the Tides is an interesting one as well. If you have a bunch of Arcanists, which means you're leaning more towards the slower control -y version of this deck, then it gets a bit better. Often you're not really going to want a six mana spell in the deck. However, returning two creatures to your opponent's hand could end the game. Drawing three cards is very good. It has some synergies with tutelage. So again, this is more... I, I've put all of these cards in this pile because they're very much playable if you're leaning more towards controlled and less towards explosive aggro. Uh, but really, when you're building this deck and playing this deck, you want to be leaning more towards the explosive aggro with a little bit of the control being your removal. Moving on to the barely playable column, we have Wall of Runes, which is you know a good card in the controlling decks, but not a very good card in this deck. It can be, again, lean more towards control. It gets a bit better, but really, you don't want to be playing this card in blue-red spells. Fear of the Bitten is much better in red-white where you have protection for the creature that has plus two, plus two. However, it's not massively out of place in this deck. You can put it on a creature uh, and get in a fair amount of damage. You know, an extra, even an extra two damage for the one mana that triggers prowess can be a fine rate. But very often in blue-red, you're going to put this on a creature and then the creature's going to die shortly afterwards. Goblin Arsonist uh, belongs a lot more in the black-red deck where you can use Alchemist Gift to give it Death Touch. Uh, it's really more of a defensive creature than it is an attacking creature. In Red White, you can use Daybreak Charger to give it plus 2 plus 0, or plus 3 plus 0, I think Daybreak Charger is. So yeah, it's not, it's not ideal in this deck, but if you're lacking low drops, then it's perfectly fine. Short Sword, I don't think really belongs in this deck. Again, you can play it. But I think because of all of these spell synergies, you're less likely to want to be casting Short Sword as you are in some of the other aggressive decks. Prismite, very much a barely playable 2-drop. It's a 2-mana do-nothing 2-1, essentially. If you're really struggling for 2-drops, you can put it in the deck, but otherwise I wouldn't. Cancel, I don't think really has a place in this deck, or even in the format, really. I think there are better counter spells in the form of Lofty Denial and in even Rewind. Uh, so I don't think you're really going to want it to be leaving three mana open to counter spells, especially in this deck. Pladium Mirror uh, is a good card, but it doesn't belong in this deck, really. If you're really struggling for three drops or more creatures, then you can play it, but you don't really have a use for the two mana. Sky Scanner, I think, is probably one of the worst decks for Sky Scanner because it, there's so few ways to make use of it. A three mana 1-1 one, one that draws a card, you know, it does replace itself, but it doesn't really affect the board enough to to be good. You're competing with a fair amount of other three drops in this uh, particular deck, like Spellgorge or Weird, Mistral Singer, even Rousing Reed on one of your two drops, Frost Breath, Bolt Hound. It just doesn't do enough really to make the deck. Tide Skimmer just doesn't belong in this deck. It's a blue white skies card. Tome Anima, even in the draw two decks, Tome Anima isn't great if you have some synergies with it, but it's just competing with so many other four drops that you're not really going to want it in the deck. Wishcoin Crab is a defensive creature and not even a particularly good defensive creature in this format, so I don't think you're really going to want it to be putting it in the deck. But in a pinch, I guess it can go in if you're leaning more towards the control end. Rewind is interesting. Rewind has the potential to be very powerful. The fact that it untaps your lands in a deck that might have a lot of instants in it 
can be very good. You know, they cast their big thing, you rewind it, and then cast Goblin Wizardry afterwards or kill one of their creatures. But I don't think you're going to be taking this very highly, nor is it going to really make the cut. Maybe as a 24th card. Terra Ogre, another 4 drop that's competing with too many 4 drops for its place in the deck. Very, very, very rarely are you going to be able to trigger its 2 damage to each opponent. Reach can be relevant, but that's more of a defensive attribute than it is an offensive attribute. So I don't think you're going to be wanting to take Terra Ogre too highly. Spine Megalodon, uh, it's a 7 mana card that I think just doesn't do enough in this particular deck to, to warrant putting it in. It doesn't have Trample. Uh, sure, a Rousing read on it makes it you know, a ridiculous threat, but that's two cards and very late game, and really, they, you want your opponent to be dead by the time you're casting Spine Megalodon. Similarly with Hellkite Punisher, if you really need some top end or you're leaning more towards the slower version of the deck, then Hellkite Punisher is a fine card, but 7 mana 6-6 six, six Flyer, you know, your opponent's more often than not going to be dead by the time you cast this. And then this final column are sideboard cards, bad cards, and cards that just don't fit the deck at all, like Bone Pit Brute, it's just you know, way too expensive, doesn't do enough, doesn't have enough synergies in our deck. So that's my pick order for the blue-red spells deck. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you agree with it. I think this is a good start and a good rule of thumb if you're drafting this particular deck. Just want to say thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to come hang out with me, I'm on Twitch TV at Playing With Purpose.